In this session, we're going to take our first look at the Autodesk Vehicle Tracking 2015 software. Specifically, we'll be talking about some of the initial settings that we'll make after the software is installed. Uh, these settings will, in this case, we'll be talking more about units. Um, and then we'll also look at the vehicle library. We'll take a look at the amount of vehicles that we have available to us when we're going to do a swept path analysis. As you can see, I've just launched Civil 3D 2015, and I'm sitting in the default uh, unsaved drawing file. Now, even though this file is unsaved, it is based on the Civil 3D Imperial template, and in that template, each unit equals one foot. Since we're going to be talking about scale here in a minute, we'll verify the uh, units in this drawing. One way I can do that is by opening the application menu. I'll come down to Drawing Utilities, and I'll choose Units. And we can see right here in this drawing, each each unit represents one foot. Likewise, you know, if I wanted to, I could on the Settings tab, I could right-click on the drawing name and go to Edit Drawing Settings. We can see that same value right up here. So this is an Imperial environment. Now let's take a look at the vehicle tracking settings. All of our vehicle tracking options will be found on the Vehicle Tracking tab. Once I select the tab, I'm going to come down and click the settings icon. You will find that vehicle tracking has a large amount of settings. Uh, we won't have a chance to go through all of them here, obviously, but uh, we're going to go through some of the uh, really important ones. Since vehicle tracking, the software originated in the UK, you may find that the default settings are assigned to metric. I've already gone through and adjusted mine, but in the event you have not adjusted yours, this is where you can do it. In the settings wizard here, the very first option wants to know uh, the drawing unit. What, what does that represent in the drawing? Well, we've established that's feet. Uh, we want to um, make sure that's correct, otherwise the vehicles that we drop in the file could be too large or, or too small. Let me click Next. The other most important settings are right here. This is where we select our preferred distance, speed, and angular units. As you can see, mine are set to feet, miles per hour, and degrees. Let me click Next. We're going to use layer naming convention as we create the paths. They'll be placed on unique layers. We'll look at that in a little bit. Next. Next. I'm just going to flip through some of these. For the most part, we're going to accept the defaults. This, uh, the way to look at these settings, there are a lot of options. Um, you certainly don't have to go through and tweak all of them, but in the event you're wondering, can I do something, this, this is where you're going to go to do it. Uh, right here we can see the default forward design speed is 5 miles per hour, reverse design speed is 2.5. We'll see this, these numbers pop up again when we do our first swept path analysis. Let me click Next. I'm not going to assign any limits to my uh, steering or to my articulation. Uh, I don't want to get into uh, dynamic effects. I'm not going to turn that on. The, another important setting is this very last one. When you adjust your settings, you can assign those settings for all new paths in this drawing or this session only. Uh, or if you'd like the settings or the adjustments that you made to apply uh, to, the, to every new drawing, we can assign those as defaults. Um, so now I didn't make any changes, but I'm going to make the assumption if you changed yours from metric to, uh, to imperial, uh, you would go through and set this button, make those the default. Let me go ahead and click finish. Now let's take a look since we're going to be doing some swept path analysis, we're going, to, we're going to look at the library of vehicles available first. To view the library, I'm going to come up to the Swept Paths panel, and I can click the Vehicle Library Explorer icon to bring the library up on screen. When this comes up, you will find that the library is in two halves. We can move these independently on screen if we want. Generally speaking, the way it works, you will select your vehicle over here on the left, and then you will view the properties of that vehicle over here on the right. Since these are independent halves, it is possible to close one half. If I click the X, I can close the vehicle diagram. In the event you've done that and you'd like to bring it back, you can click the vehicle diagram icon right here to toggle that back on screen. Over here on the left is where we'll find the library of vehicles. I'm going to drag the slider down. You'll see that the library contains groups of vehicles representing many different countries and standards. These vehicles include everything from passenger cars to aircraft to light rail. I'm going to drag this all the way to the bottom, and then I'll click to expand the U.S. design vehicles. This group includes several subgroups. Notice that some of these vehicles are state-specific. I'm going to open the statewide Ashto group, and then we'll drag down, and as an example, I'm going to open up the Ashto 2011 group, the U.S. customary, the imperial measurements. In here we'll find a list of vehicles, as well as some columns representing their dimensions, or at least a few of their dimensions. As an example, we can see the A bus here has a width of 8.5 feet, a length of 60 feet, and a wall-to-wall -wall radius of 
44.71 so we can see some of the information about each vehicle. In the event you'd like to see more information in this view you can click the insert or remove column button. Just as an example I'll select that we can see the columns that are currently displaying. If I wanted to view another column for instance curb to curb turning radius I could select that column and click the arrow to pull that over into the interface. I can then use the move down or move button to change the order of the columns. I'll move this all the way to the bottom and I'll click close. And if I drag the slider back down, drag the slider over, you can see that I now have an additional column for curb to curb radius. Let's take that back out. I'll do that by clicking the icon again. I'll choose that radius or that setting and I'll click the arrow to pull that out and I'll click close. Once I've selected the group that I'm interested in, I can then select a vehicle from the list. As an example, I'll select WB40 Intermediate Semi-Trailer. When I do, we can see the diagram of that vehicle over here on the right. This happens to be a default view. I'm seeing the vehicle from a plan perspective. Using the toggles down here at the bottom, I can turn various items on and off. Currently, I'm viewing uh, Show All. I'm seeing all of the properties of the vehicle, at least geometrically speaking. I can click the show body to see that only or I can view the chassis only. If I click the elevation view I can see a profile of the vehicle. Let me flip this back to the body and chassis view. If I click the icon right here I can see a traditional turn template. This is what we used to have in the old days. We'd print uh, or we'd have these turn templates on sheets of clear acetate and then we'd print our subdivision plans on paper and then you'd lay the acetate down and see if you can identify using paper. Uh, whether the vehicles could make the various turns in the uh, in the subdivision. Notice that as I turn this toggle on and off the view is smart enough to zoom in on the extents of my geometry. That's because this toggle is turned on, auto scale. In the event you turn that off it will not rescale. Let me turn that back on. Up at the top of the screen we have our traditional zoom tools. I have zoom extents, I have zoom in and zoom out. Let me click the zoom in button now when we zoom in we can't pan in this view like we can in traditional AutoCAD. Here you're going to pan by left clicking. Just left click and it will focus your view in the direction of, of the area where you clicked. So that's how we can move around in this view. Using the next pair of icons we can toggle or, or adjust the steering axis or the steering angle. Now this is just visual purposes only uh, so you can get an idea of how that would work in the drawing. Once again I'm going to go back to the zoom extents and I can use the next pair of toggles to adjust the articulation angle so we can see how any articulation would be controlled on this vehicle. Finally, in the event you're doing a swept path analysis and you're having trouble finding a specific vehicle, we can use the search area up here to locate vehicles in the library. As an example, let's find out if the vehicle tracking software accommodates a stretch limousine. Up here in the search I'll type limousine and I'll press enter. This will filter the list. Looks like under the specialist vehicles group. I'll expand that. There is an option for stretch limousines and we have four of them. I can click through the four that are here and see their properties over on the right. Looks like the longest stretch limo we have is the 120 model. Looks like it's 28.45 feet long. To clear the search we can select the text and press delete and then press enter to go back to a uh, standard grouped list. Now that we have a general understanding of how this vehicle library works, I'm going to close things up. I'll do that by clicking the X to close the vehicle diagram and then I'll click the close button to close the library explorer. And based on what we know now, let's assume you had to do a swept path analysis for a garbage truck. What I'd like you to do is use the vehicle tracking library to identify what garbage truck options are available. And since I don't expect you to do anything that I'm not willing to do myself, I'm going to pop up the library and I'll look for this too. Once again, I'll go back to the Swept Paths panel and I'll click the Vehicle Library Explorer. When this comes up, I can see the diagram is off. Let me click the icon to bring that back. And then since we're looking for a garbage truck, probably the quickest way is to use the search box. I'm going to click in here and I'll type garbage and press enter. Looks like under US Design Vehicles we have one. If I expand this out we have a rear load garbage truck. If I select that we can see some basic properties. I can come over here and see additional measurements or additional dimensions. We can also view this in a profile view. 
Also be aware that what you find is going to be based on your search. As an example, instead of searching for garbage, I could have searched for refuse. I'll press enter, in which case under the British design vehicles we found one. Looks like there's a DB32 refuse vehicle. Very similar to what we have in the US, looks like it's just a little bit shorter. Now that I'm finished with my search, I'm going to clear the search box. I'll just delete that and press enter. And when I'm finished with the Vehicle Library Explorer this time, I'm just going to come down and click Close. This will close both panels. Now that we understand how to locate and select vehicles within the Vehicle Tracking Library, we're ready to move on to the next session where we'll use one of those vehicles to perform a swept path analysis.